Hey everyone, it's Brandy and you are watching Abstract Crafter. Today's video is a drill with me. What? Yes, it's true. I got some updates, some stories, where have I been, what have I been up to, what's in, the in store for the future, all of that fun stuff. So if you would like to drill with me, then go ahead and grab your diamond painting, get something to drink, get comfy, and let's get to it, and we will start as soon as I roll that intro credit. All right, guys, let's do this. I'm going to get comfortable here, get a little bit set up. I thought it would be fun just to start from the beginning, my whole process of what I do when I start a painting. The only thing I did ahead of time was take the plastic cover off because the light was bouncing off of it. The light's not going to be super great, but I don't feel like sweating on my painting today, so I only have one light instead of three. So forgive me. Uh, most people don't watch these videos anyway, they just listen, so I'm hoping that's the case. I'm going to try to put this up on the turtle's face here, as that's where most of the light is. And all this is, is just, see, I really do cut these up and use them. Uh, it's a piece of cover paper and uh, the drills that I've already completed. This is a style of painting where I do all of one color. And then I move on to the next. And I try to go from... Sometimes it depends. Sometimes I'll do the majority color and then work to the least color. In this case, I went from the least and I have three colors left of the most. Well, this dark yellow, this like neon -y, light yellow, and purple. And so we're going to start with the purple. And for this kit, I did something a little different. I've done this one other time, I did it with Realis because they provided such nice baggies where I'm not kidding them first because I'm using all of the color right away. So I'll cut this open, dump it all into the tray. When I think I'm done, then I'll just put it in the baggie that I already have prepped. Uh, I've, Like I said, I've done this before and I kind of like it. It's different, but when I was going to get this guy put into its uh, little kit, all I kept thinking is those colors are going to come out of the containers one time and then you're going to put them back into the container and when you're done you're going to put them away into storage. So it didn't really seem, I mean I knew that even though it's a big painting I knew that's how I was going to do this is finish each color. It's easy enough to do. Uh, typically I wouldn't but it's a partial so if this was a full drill there's no way that this would be able to work. So all I do then is I just cut this open and that's why I like having this big tray. I like this so much better than my big orange one just because it does have the spout and my orange one doesn't. So I'll just dump all of them in there and then this would just be garbage. Uh, with these ones here that are like plum, plump, full, <laughs> plum full, plump, I don't know. I would just do half of the bag and then just set this off to the side and fill the tray up twice. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do, obviously, is shake out my tray and then I got to look through it for garbage right away because uh, as nice as this kit has been to work on, it does still have quite a bit of garbage. Some colors obviously more than others as with any other kit. This one, this brownie color here, I don't know if you're seeing that. I'm zoomed in, so I don't know what you're seeing and what you're not. Yes. Right here, this brown color is, that was really trashy. So let's see if I can, I might have to pause midpoint and get a better, get my other light set up. I'm just hoping not to. So these ones are just concave. I actually haven't run into that problem too much with these maybe two or three per color. It's mostly just big gaping holes or like stained ones like this guy here. Get into the right area. Yeah, this lighting's not very good. Anyway, he's right there and you can see a little bit of green on him. That's been the biggest trouble I've been facing. 
So I think I will go ahead and pause and grab the other light. I'm not going to do all three, but I will do these two. I'll pick through the garbage so that you don't have to watch me do that with this color. And then we'll be back. I have reaching across. Sorry about that. I have a list here of all the topics for us to discuss so that I can kind of have some way of knowing what to say because it's been so long and there's so many things I want to talk about. But if I do that, then this will be like forever long. So I'm trying to keep this to three clips max, which is about 45 minutes. Well, no, 25 minutes per clip. So 50, an hour and 15 before editing. We'll see. We'll see what we get done. But let me get another light set up and go through this garbage quick. And then we'll get right into that and we'll get on to the topics. All right. I think we're okay now. It's a little bit better, even though, like I said, you guys don't really need the light. I don't really need the light either, but it'll make the video look better for those that do happen to look up. I don't want you to think that I don't care. <laughs> so, all right, I got all my materials that I couldn't possibly need. Put the baggie so I remember what number I'm working, or letter I'm working on. Right there, got the garbage kind of out of the way, but still where I can reach it. And I got to look to see what my parameters are. So let's see, you guys can see up till this bubble. So I won't put those in. I'll try to work more in the center here. And then, yeah, I don't think I'll finish this painting in the time that we're going to have. But you never know. So typically, I'll try to like find all the like the onesie twosies and fill those in first. Sometimes I don't do that at all, and I just go for the biggest areas. With this painting, though, it's been weird, because I ran out of one color, this light blue color here, and I came really close to running out of a different color. The brown, for sure, but then there was another one I am not remembering offhand. It was one of the green colors. So it's, it's been weird because, but then the rest of them have been incredibly consistent as far as uh, how much I had left over. Like it's the, almost the exact same amount so long as there wasn't a ton of garbage. So it's strange. Let's see, this is another reason I need this because if my hand keeps sticking down there and there's no F's down there, which is the number I'm working on. So drill with me have kind of been absent on my channel and with good reason so when I first started my channel it was actually pretty easy because my mom had taken my kids down to my sisters and I just kind of did it on a whim I was super angry because this painting I had invested in it was like my th third diamond painting that I had actually ordered not diamond dots I had done quite like three or four diamond dots at this point, but I hadn't actually gotten diamond paintings from any other company besides diamond dot. Well, I ordered from this company and I'm not allowed to say the company name because he'll file a lawsuit against me because he has crappy products. Anyway, I ordered two paintings from this site and They arrived and they were in like decent shape. I mean, one of them was really bad, wrinkly and like the glue was pinched all over, but I didn't know nothing about any of that kind of stuff at the time. You know, that was all kind of new to me. Nobody had done post reviews or after completion reviews or anything like that. So, and, but people kept like promoting this company. And so I ordered two paintings from there, super expensive by the way, it ended up being like $70 for two paintings, a 30 by 40 and a 50 by 60. Knowing what I know now, I would never pay that kinds of prices to a drop ship company. So I get these paintings and I ordered one specifically for my husband. And if I can find a picture of it, I'll insert it here while I'm talking. And it. I'll try to describe it in the meantime. 
It's polar bears playing under the northern lights. Well, the first thing I noticed about it is that the colors are really off. Like, they don't really look good in comparison to what I thought I was buying. They were just like a few shades off, like the Northern Lights colors didn't really like mesh together as beautifully as like the picture had advertised or how they really do in real life. And the polar bears were so small and so grainy that you couldn't really tell what they were unless you were quite a distance away. And so I, out of frustration, I picked up my camera and I filmed. And then I uploaded it, and I tell you the whole time I was shaking like a leaf because I was, I'd, I'd always wanted a channel, and most of you know that from watching older post, uh, post reviews, older Drill With Me videos, I talked about that quite a bit. And so I just did it, and I uploaded it, and it was basically me just ripping this painting to shreds. Well, not really. I was pointing out po pros and cro cons. Pros and cons. My goodness, I can't talk. But anyway, um, the whole point of that was to tell you that that's how I started my channel. And at that time, I didn't think about how I was going to maintain filming. And so after everybody came home, I realized that I couldn't really film during the day because the kids homeschool and do online school. So, you know, all my, my time needs to be dedicated to that during the day and doing all the other things that a stay-at-home mom does. And so I started filming at night. I'd make up signs and everything. You know, like, pin them up. I have a curtain that encloses my living room so that if we're watching movies or something or whatever, we can block out all the light from the rest of the house. And so it kind of worked out. I'd be able to shut the curtains, put my sign up saying I'm filming, if you need me, blah, 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 wave at me, or whatever I wrote. I don't even remember at this point. But I wrote something on there so that they could still get my attention without me having to do some heavy editing to my video. You know, to edit out the kids saying, Mom, or Mom, can you do this, or you know, things like that. And that worked for quite a while. <laughs> and then... thought there was a dog at my door. Well, and then my, my brother moved in. And my house isn't really set up to have this many house guests. So, all together, it's me, my husband, our three kids. And then about a year and a half or so ago, my oldest son's best friend moved in. For reasons that we won't get into today. So that brings it up to six. And then my mom also lives with us. Well, we don't say it in any way like I live with my mom or my mom lives with me. We live together. So then there's seven. And now my brother moved in and there's eight. And it's a one bathroom household, four bedrooms. We have like this weird living room. Like it's a living room and then a split dining room. So there's like a dining room and then another dining room. I don't know how, like, I guess one would just be like almost like a giant walkway, but essentially it's a two room dining room. So my mom blocked off one part of it and made that her bedroom. And now the middle part is also blocked off to be a bedroom. And I'm not exactly comfortable filming anymore at night because I don't. I don't know. It's different like when my mom would fall asleep then I could easily film at night. Well, my brother isn't really on that kind of schedule so I can't film when I want to. So now what I do is when we're not working on homework I set up in my bedroom which if you could see what this space looks like right now. So you're seeing this here. This is all the space I have to film. Directly in front of me is makeup and homework. And then behind me this way is my bed. Uh, there's a wall right here, like right off to the side of this table. And then the dog bed is right off to the other side. 
So this is my space. And so doing things like framing videos, it's not really an option right now because I just don't have the space. Now, on the, the good side of that is that we are moving. My husband is graduating. He had went back and got his master's. Master's or bachelor's? Whatever one is first. So if it goes master's and then bachelor's, that's what he's doing. So he's just finishing. That I always get them mixed up and I don't know why. But he's just finishing that. And he'll actually graduate in like two or three months. But in the meantime, he can start looking for a better paying job. We were hoping that maybe where he was at would actually pay him what he's worth. But you know how that kind of thing goes. It's just not going to happen. It's just not in the books. It's a small company. They employ about 50 people. They are bought out by Victorinox, which is the people that make Swiss Army knives. And they're not in the same place. So they really have... You know, they set a limit as far as how much he can be paid, how much his raises can be, and it's just not enough. You know, he's worth so much more than what they can pay him. It's not, he loves it there, he loves his boss, he loves his job, but, you know, we also have a family to take care of, and we just think it's time. We've never really lived alone as a family, so... That is in the works, and when that happens, probably around the summer, we want to make sure that wherever we move is going to have the best space possible for me to be able to film in. Because he knows how much I love this, and how much I love doing videos, and if I had the space, how much more I could do. Like, my lights right now are just ridiculous. There's, like... You know those desk lamps that can be adjustable? Like one of them is one of those bendy type cords and one of them is an arm that, you know, you can adjust, but it's always at a V. And those are my lights and my third light is literally the flashlight on my camera. So at some point I want to get the lights, the soft boxes and the ring light. I have a ring light, it's really small. It's on a tripod, but it just doesn't work very well. So the long end of it all is that my videos can only go so far at this point until I move. Doing drill with me is, is just not that easy right now because I it, they take time to film. I don't like limiting myself when I film these because I know that I like listening to drill with me is or whip in chats or whatever people call them it's basically all the same where we diamond paint together i like listening to those while i diamond paint and i like when they're a little bit longer at least an hour in length so that i don't have to worry about switching videos you know i can just keep going and just listen for a long time and then so i like to give that you know, give it back in return, you know. And I haven't been able to do that. And that was one of my favorite things to film on my channel. And, in fact, I used to ha make sure I had one at least every Friday. And I haven't been able to do that in months. And every time I do get a little bit of time to film, there's other things that I want to film, too. So it just hasn't worked out. Oops, but we'll get there, and I will tr I'm going to try to make a filming schedule so that I can get back to filming them at least once every other week. And preferably, I'd like to do it every week. And I, the light is blinding me, so I can't continue to checkerboard this. I'll just have to fill it in and then come back, and maybe I'll be able to see the letters better. So hopefully that'll work out. I mean, I'm kind of at like this creative impasse, if you will. Like, I like doing the craft videos, but they don't get... Oh, I mean, I'm lucky if they get 500 views. And it's a lot of work. That's not even half of my viewership. And that's looking at 
you know, my analytics and my statistics and all that fun stuff that you can do when you're a YouTube creator. And it's not even half of what I typically get on most videos. So it's a lot of work to do the crafting videos. And I mean, it could just be a matter of I'm not doing the kinds of things that people want to see. Now, I know people want to see more paper crafts, but I've never claimed to be a paper crafter. The one video you guys saw from me, that was the first time I had ever done paper crafts. So, I, while I do enjoy it, that's not the only craft I want to have on my channel. So, I started, when I did that video, it kind of got everybody thinking that, that, that that's exactly the type of video that videos that I was going to do. I do have the mini doll houses and I will finish filming that. I do, I, I, I not going to lie, I got frustrated with it and I had a really bad eczema breakout on my hand and when that happens I don't like filming where my hands are going to be like the main focus point. Typically, I'll just do drill with me's and stuff because you don't really look at my hand or not drill with me's. See, drill with me on the brain. Uh, post reviews or unboxings, and that because you're not really looking at my hands. I mean, you'll see my hands, but not like you do with building the doll houses. So I have not finished that tin. I fully intended to do it on camera, and though it's really late, I mean, if you want me to finish that, I I certainly will. If you don't want, if you just rather I do something different as far as the dollhouses go then I can just get a new one I've been building them again so that kind of sparked re-sparked my love for building them and so I have been doing that off camera I'll do a little bit of that and then I'll like during the day and then in the evening time I'll throw some videos on and work on diamond painting so I have been doing a little bit of both. I still have issues working on cross stitching or sewing of any kind because my eyes are in the winter time I guess. They get really dry and they hurt. So I can't focus on working on stitching for too long. Some days I can't even diamond paint. So it just it depends. Like right now working just on this yellow it is really hard on my eyes with all these bright lights but I can do it well enough that it's not causing headaches or issues of that kind so there's that <laughs> and I am so crooked I can see how crooked I am because I can't because I'm looking at an angle so that my head isn't in the way you guys can see what I'm drilling. So before I move on to the next subject, I want to just say that I really wish that when I saw, because I'm not going to do a post review on this since, I don't know if I said this already, since you can't buy, I can't find these or you can buy them anymore. If I did say that already, I apologize. Um, but... I really do like these because the colors are so unique. They're like neon. They're definitely not DMC colors. I mean, maybe some of them might be close to a DMC number, but like the pink that you can't really see, it's like down here. I'll try to, well, I can just show you through this. So there's this pink color right here. It's next to this neon blue. That's definitely not DMC, and I don't think that there's a DMC color that would come close to it. I mean, I could just assign one to it, but I don't like doing that unless it's actually the number. But I really do like it. It's They're a lot of fun. They're really cute. This is a unique way to do a turtle. And, you know, I never expected it to look this colorful and vibrant. And it's too bad that I don't know where to buy these. I mean, I'm sure you can buy them online somewhere. I wish my Walmart would have kept selling them, but almost as soon as they got them in, they went on clearance, and so they sold super fast, and at the time, there was like two or three more that I wanted, but I didn't know what the quality would be, so 
I didn't buy them and I should have done this sooner. It was my intention, but I got a little overwhelmed with all the paintings that I started getting. So I started just going from oldest to newest. And this was one that hadn't been put into a kit yet. And so I just went with it. And like I said, I just started working on it because it was not worth putting into a kit. So I just went with it, but it just really nice. I like it. I have no idea what the heck I'm going to do with this sea turtle. I actually thought about maybe selling my diamond paintings, the ones that I don't like want to keep on my wall, but I won't even know what a fair price would be. I mean, I'm sure I could get an idea if I just look, but it's the point of I don't want to look because I don't really want to get rid of any of them. But at the same time, it's like I, I argue with myself. So it's like, you're not going to do anything with them. So why do you want to keep them? Because they're mine and I invested hours into them. See, that's the kind of arguments I have with myself. <laughs> so let's see. I got to try to stay on topic. Um, so the long of it with the craft series is I'll probably still do some here and there. Whenever it is that I get something good. Or something that I really want to show you guys I'll probably do it but as far as making it a regular series there's just not enough interest in it right now so I don't know I guess maybe I'll try again to make it a regular series when my channel gets a little bigger I mean we are so close to 3,000 and I'm only gonna say it here because it's more informal once we hit 3,000, I do have a really nice giveaway planned. And there's actually going to be three winners for this one. I'm pretty excited about it. But we got to get there first. I figure we'll probably get there. I've been going pretty slowly. Probably because my uploads are erratic. But we're getting there slowly. Okay, sorry about that. My camera cut me off. So I was saying that as soon as we hit 3,000... I'll start the process of running the giveaway. I don't know any of the details of it or anything yet, but we'll get there. Uh, I'm trying to be more active in my Facebook and on, I haven't done anything with Instagram. I'm trying to get more active on those platforms. It's just not easy right now. <laughs> it's kind of like with everything else. So I'm going to... I have to actively work on that. And I did promise a face reveal for my birthday. I will film that video. It probably won't go out on my birthday. Because everything seems to be behind schedule right now. Like. We've had a lot of. Really bad snowstorms around here. Like we're in that polar vortex or whatever. So the temperatures have been. They've actually been so cold that my truck won't start, and it, it, my truck always starts. That thing is a beast. It, no cold weather has ever made it not start. And I know all the tips and tricks of how to make sure that your vehicles start. I've lived in this cold weather area my entire life, so I am very well versed in cold weather, weather car etiquette. <laughs> That's a fancy way of putting it on. Huh? I know I'm kind of all over the place on this board, but I'm kind of just doing whatever I can see at the moment. Alright, so... Obviously, I've had a few different series besides the craft series going up. I've had uh, Exploring the Essentials, which is just basically Diamond Painting 101. It's just me trying to be more clickbaity, I guess, which... Honestly, that's not very clickbaity, and I'm opening up my 5-hour energy, because it's about that. <clears throat> it's about that time, so sorry, excuse me. I'm not editing this video, so I'm trying really not to clear my throat, or say, um, or, uh, too much. So, I just want to get this video out to you guys, so I don't want to make this something that I have to add, do a bunch of edits to. I want to just be able to throw my end clip on my intro, my outro music. I just want to be able to throw that on there and upload it. Because these videos, 
being as long as they usually are, take a long time to upload. Not only to, well, first I have to render it in my editing program, and then I have to upload it to YouTube, and I'm not even joking, I swear to God that if a video is an hour, YouTube takes two hours to upload it. I might not be exact, exactly that, but it's dang near, dang near it, so <laughs> it does take a long time to upload. So I try to be consistent with times and uploading at certain times, but that it doesn't always work that way. Plus, my internet's been really spotty lately with all this cold weather and all the storms. I, I lost power or internet a few times already now. Most of the time, it'll just come in and out and it won't really affect anything. The other night, it completely shut down and I didn't have anything. And that was fun. And I'm sure it's not ending because we have more storms on the horizon. Um, anyway, let's get back on topic. See, I'm glad I have this. So, the other series that I did was the Project Amazon. And I called it a million things. I called it Project Amazon, Amazon Project, Amazon Experiment. All being said that it's all the same thing to me. <laughs> so... And just whatever comes into my head at the time that I'm filming it. You know, I have no filter. I don't, sometimes don't think about things before I, and I, you know, before I say them, I don't have a script, so there, I don't have that to keep me on track. I, even this little checklist doesn't really do a good job, so I can't imagine actually creating a script for myself to stay and help me keep on track. I just don't think it would work. I think I would stumble over my words a lot more and be a lot less cohesive. As weird as that might sound to some people, be, having OCD and being a perfectionist, you would think that a script would be, like, super ideal for me. But it's actually quite the opposite. Because I'm a perfectionist, if I make a script, I will sit and rewrite it over and over and over. So uh, I just take that right out of the equation, and I choose to just speak from the t whatever is at the top of my head, and go from there it mostly works out for me because even if I don't write a script in my head I'm still rehearsing over and over and over what I want to say in a video I can't film it until I feel just right about it that kind of thing it's not fun having OCD sometimes it's a blessing and most of the time it's a curse it's a blessing because I absolutely love organizing so in that sense, I look, it does well for me. But anyway, we're already off topic. I'm talking about being off topic, and I'm getting off topic. So, um, so yeah, Project Amazon was a huge success. I'm going to take a pause. I'm going to swallow this down, and then I'll tell you about where we're going to go from here with that series. All right, down the hatch it is. So, that was super successful. You guys were so amazing with your support for that whole series. I know people were starting to get sick of unboxings, but I think the majority of you understood that it was so much more than just an unboxing because so many people don't understand Amazon. They've never ordered from anywhere but AliExpress or, like, uh, like individual private sellers like Diamond Art Club and um, New Frog. See, I can't even think of any of them because I don't order from them. I've, I always order from, from Amazon except when I order, like... When I first started, I ordered from that one company that gave me really crappy diamond paintings. I ordered from Amazon, and I had mixed results then. And so I thought I would give AliExpress a chance after watching quite a few videos and seeing the nice paintings that people were getting from AliExpress. And I 
even starting with that, I had mixed results. So I wanted to come back and try Amazon again because I had noticed that I was seeing more and more pictures. Like when I first started ordering, you would just see the same 50 or so paintings being circulated. It wasn't always easy to find. And they were almost always partials when I first started buying them from Amazon. You could find all the other stuff. You could find squares and you could find whole drills, but not as easily as you can now. Like, a lot of them, um, sellers would say that they were selling full drills, but you'd end up getting it and it would be a partial. And a lot of times Amazon won't do anything about it because they're just shipping for these companies. So uh, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna do this experiment not just for the video, for myself as well. I thought it would be a really good way to see if they had improved since I had ordered. You know, I was for the most part happy with Amazon before. I just got stuck in this big AliExpress loop and always buying from AliExpress. And I had pretty good results from AliExpress. At first it was kind of like, like I always say bad luck for me runs in threes and fives, which oddly enough is also my lucky numbers. So that's why, I don't know, it's a whole complicated thing. I won't get into it. Um, but then once I fought through the really bad sellers on AliExpress, I started having amazing results, but I am such an impatient person that even waiting three weeks was like torturous on my on my soul. I just, it was so, I didn't like it. So I thought, well, I need to find some Amazon sellers so that I can have something to buy in between the times I'm waiting for AliExpress. Well, now I have quite a big stash, so I don't really need to order anything anymore. But I still wanted to know who were the good sellers on Amazon. And it seemed to work out pretty well. I didn't have very much, if any, negative feedback on that. I mean, I have quite a few dislikes, but that's not because of the series, I don't believe. I'd, I'll tell you about that in just a minute. Uh, I, ha I think I have a hate watcher. If you don't know what a hate watcher is, that's what I'll explain to you. So, I mean, yes, my videos could just be bad to them. That That's always a possibility. I just don't think that's the case. And I'll tell you how I know. But let's finish the Amazon thing. So, I, I, in those videos, I kind of was asking if people wanted me to do another round, because I did. Ultimately, ended up being, like, I ordered seven of them in that project, because there was three singles and then two double packs. So, yeah, that it was seven. And then Lucy from Star Roar contacted me after episode two and asked if I would review her company. And I, she didn't know that I was going to include it with Project Amazon. But I told her, I was like, this is perfect timing. I'm running this series. And it'll be like the best time to highlight your company. I mean, she didn't need that series to really highlight it. Because her company is amazing. And I absolutely love her. And I love her stuff. So, she, I think she just needed help getting her name out there. Because her products really do speak for themselves. So that's not the point. Everybody knows how much I love Star Roar and Lucy. So, so then I got that super colorful Diamond Swim one from Wotion. And I thought about including that. But I had really, I had filmed everything from Project Amazon in one day. I waited for all the packages to come to me. It just, they were just spread out over like three days. So once they all arrived, I just mass filmed so that I could keep all the information in my head as far as what I said about the company I unboxed just before. And so all that information would be completely fresh in my head. And so I thought about adding Wotion onto that, but like I said, everything was bulk filmed 
and so it kind of would have been out of sync as far as the flow of how the other videos went because I filmed them all at once. They had the same kind of flow about them. But I had asked if people wanted to see another round of that because there were, I had to cut so many of the stores out. There were so many stores that had some amazing looking pictures and even better like description boxes than the ones that I even ordered from. Some of them were very thorough in their descriptions and I thought, okay, well this one I didn't really care about stuff like that so maybe I'll do a round two where I'm paying specific attention to the description boxes and ordering pictures based solely on that instead of buying the picture and not caring about the description or the ratings or anything like that. So I thought about doing it, like, deciding on a purchase completely opposite of the way I did it in the first round. And I probably will still do that, but I don't want to do it back to back because I don't want people to be overwhelmed with Amazon since I am an affiliate with Amazon and I have now my own influencer page. I don't want people to think that I'm doing it just for the the sales or the money or whatever because that's honestly not why I do it. I, I am never money motivated in anything I do for my channel. As hard as that might believe, be to believe for some people, that's just not what motivates me. If it did, I would be so, sorely disappointed. YouTube is not a high paying career by any means. So I definitely would never do this for the money. If I had millions of subs, it might be a different story, you know. I still wouldn't lie to you, but maybe then, you know, the money would be worth it. But at my channel size, it's just never going to be worth the money. So everything I do is because I want to do it and I think it's worth doing is, I guess, what my point is. Uh, so I, want, I, I will do a round two of the Amazon, but I just want to give you guys a little bit of break from that. And somebody, well, more than one, I had quite a few people suggest, I think it's called Joom, J-O-O-M, and I actually had never heard of them. And I checked them out and they seemed okay, and it definitely seemed like it was something I could do as a project in the way that I did Amazon. I haven't looked too thoroughly, I don't know if they're like New Frog, where they're a third party seller, or if there's multiple sellers on there, or anything like that. I have to do a little bit more research. Either way, I will. If they are like New Frog in that way, then I'll probably just order a few paintings from there and then maybe a few from New Frog and just, and then also uh, Bang Good, B A N G G O O D, Bang Good, because that's another store that's very much like um, Peggy Buy and New Frog and Joom. So I might do something like that, a project with, you know, third party seller type stores. But then I was also going to do Wish. The only thing with Wish is that it's not always easy to know who the seller is. So that might be something that might be a little bit more difficult as far as, like if I get a painting and it ends up being really good, am I going to be able to easily connect you guys to the same store, the same seller to be able to buy it. So th there's just a little bit that I need to research, but that series will continue and there will, there will be multiple runs of that and that'll just be a continuous thing. You know, every once in a while, kind of like the Homegrown series, every once in a while there'll just be another five part series to it. I am waiting, there is a new American company coming out. I can't remember the name offhand. It's been in my comments, and I'm sure somebody will remind me in the comments. But they're supposed to be opening this month sometime, February 2019, or beginning of March 2019. So as soon as they do open, they will, I, I'll be doing a homegrown series on them. I might let them open for a little while before I actually do the series on them, but we'll see. Uh, they look like they have some good quality stuff too, and it's nice to see another American seller. So there will be another iteration of them coming, or of the Homegrown series coming. 
but that's kind of what the project series will be like. So it'll be like Project Amazon, Project Wish, Project Doom, Project Banggood, whatever it is that I'm store I'm doing, that's what it'll be named after. So, but I want to work through some of my stash. I have a lot of paintings I need to get through, which before I tell you about the thing about the Hate Watcher, I just want to say I am in the process of de-stashing because I have, like, sometimes I just order paintings and I, when they get to me, they're not, like, quite what I thought. Like, a good example is from Diamond Art Club, I ordered, what was it called, Princess Mononoke. I thought it was a Native American picture of an Indian Native girl with her wolf. I didn't know that it was based on a Japanese cartoon. So, I didn't think that that would bother me as much, but I never quite could get the motivation to do that painting. And every time I looked at it and realized it wasn't quite what I thought it was, the more I didn't want to do it. So, I decided to de-stash it. And when I finish going through, I think there's only three pictures that I'm going to end up de-stashing this time around. But once I do and I get everything sorted and put back into kits and put into boxes, I'll probably offer them on my in my Facebook group or on my Facebook page. I haven't decided which way I'll go with it yet. And I'll just offer them for whoever wants to pay shipping. I'll put the pictures of them up and it'll be on a first come first serve basis. But I'll try to do that every so often, just kinda go through my stash and like de-stash paintings that I just know I'm not gonna wanna do or that I don't think that I'll display. Stuff like that. So, like I said, right now I think I have three paintings and a canvas. And if anybody's like looking for just a canvas just to mess around with. But all of them details, I mean, don't leave me any comments about it. Just wait for the post to come out. I'll post something in the community tab here about where you can go to like look at that when it happens. I'll give you like a day's notice that it... I'll be like, tomorrow I'm going to post my de-stash painting, that kind of thing. So let me check the time so I'm not in the middle of this story and then the clip cuts off. Okay, I have five minutes, so let's see if I can get through this. So, hate watching. I mean, I don't care that people want to hate watch me because a view is a view is a view. So I'm still getting the views. And I've said this before. But for anybody that hasn't heard me say it, I'll say this part again, that in the eyes of YouTube, a like and a dislike are the exact same thing. It's really more for creators. Uh, as far as YouTube is concerned, that's all like engagement is what they call it. So how many comments you get, how many views you get, how many likes and dislikes you get, that kind of thing. It, all considered an engagement, um, how you engage with the community. So to YouTube, a like and a dislike are the same thing, like I said. So really, a like and a dislike is really meant to tell the creator if the content that they're doing is something that the community likes. So if you get, we're just going to lowball this for the sake of ease. So if you get 20 total likes and dislikes, if 15 of those are likes and 5 are dislikes, then you know about a quarter of your, the people that like and dislike, because that's not even a portion of the people that watch. You know, I maybe get a third of the people who watch actually like or dislike. It is super important, but I understand why people don't do it, because it ends up putting it into a playlist of liked videos. So I... Until I became a creator, I never liked or disliked videos. And quite honestly, to this day, I've still only ever disliked three videos. because, And, and that was because of the content. Like, it really was distasteful and sometimes offensive. I am not big on hitting dislike because I know how that feels. Like, it doesn't bother me so much. 
but my friends that are also creators, it, I know how it affects some of them. And I'm not going to say who because I don't want people to use that against them, I guess. But I know how it can, it hurts some people's feelings because, you know, to them, they don't know what they did wrong. And they don't understand why people didn't like it, even if it's only a couple of dislikes. Like, to me, I don't really look at that stuff unless I really want to know. Like, if it's a video that I'm doing that's kind of different from my channel, I'll go look at the likes to dislikes to see how well you guys received it. And, you know, I've never really had, I think I've had one video that the most dislikes I've ever got was like, I want to say seven or eight. And it was on a video that is also one of my most viewed. So on a video that got over 10,000 likes or 10,000 views and it only got seven dislikes, I think I can handle that. Seven people out of 10,000 didn't like it so much so that they actually hit the thumbs down button. That's, I think, amazing odds. Uh, and not everybody is going to like everything I do. I get that. I'm a strong personality and not everybody is going to like that. But, I have noticed for a couple of months now that as soon as a video comes out, and it's not on every single video, but about 95% of them, as soon as a video comes out, I typically will watch it and wait for the comments. So if you comment during, say the, first, the video comes out and it's a 25 minute video, I'll watch that and whoever comments within that 25 minutes, I'll try to reply to you right away. So I try to watch right away with you guys, not only to, you know, kind of chit chat with whoever comments right away on the video, but so I can see if there's any editing changes I need to make. And um, for a long time there, every time a video would release, is with before the video even had a chance to end, I would have at least three dislikes just right off the bat. Okay, let's finish that story. So it was like... As soon as a video would come out, whoever my hate watcher is would just go and dislike it. And I'm guessing they have multiple accounts or I have, I mean, I have a good idea of who it is. I'm almost positive. I'm thinking that it's two people, <laughs> a pair. And honestly, I don't care, but if it continues, then I'm just gonna shut off my likes to dislikes because like I said, honestly, it doesn't bother me, but it gives somebody out there some sick satisfaction of thinking that they're going to hurt my feelings because they disliked my video. Now, like I said, I understand not everybody is going to like everything I do, but I find it no coincidence that almost immediately I'll get at least two. It's not always three, but it's always two. Almost every video has at least two dislikes. Uh, there's a few that, you know, of course doesn't have any. And I'm guessing that that whoever it is just didn't get a chance. Now, it is common also. I'm not trying to stroke my ego here and by saying nobody dislikes my videos, period. You know, over the course of a few days of the video being live, I fully expect that there's going to be some dislikes. It would be kind of weird if I didn't. Like, when I first started my channel, that was different. You know, typically... You're not building up a big enough fan base. You're, you know, see if I can explain this properly. So typically when a channel starts, you're going to get those diehard people, the people that first subscribe to you, those first couple hundred subs. Typically, you'll lose a few, but for the most part, out of that first like hundred people that subscribe to you, probably 75 of them will be with you for life. There was just, you know what I mean? And that'll be your loyal diehard fan base. And it'll grow. And so at first, you don't have enough people watching you to dislike you. You have your loyal fan, fan base. And that's pretty much it for the most part. So all I'm saying is the reason I'm bringing this up and talking about it is so I could directly address the people I think are doing it. If you are really hate watching me, it doesn't bother me. You're not hurting my feelings. I have enough likes to dislikes that 
I know it's normal. I know not everybody's going to like me or dislike me. But I see you. I see what you're doing because you're doing it to other people too. I'm not going to name names because it's not my place to do so. But there are other channels experiencing this phenomenon too. Um, and it's just childish. Grow up. If you really don't like my content, that's different. Then, yes, please, downvote it so I know. But if you're doing it just to be hurtful, that's not helpful to anybody. So, that's all I'm going to say about that. I'm not giving this person or people any more of my time because they're not worth it. Um... Let's see what else. I have a couple more topics, but we're just about done here as far as time goes. So I want to have a couple more topics. Um, let's see. So I can talk about the future or some past events. All right, put it this way. If you want me to dish some dirt in the next drill with me video let me know and I will I won't do it now because I don't want anybody to feel stressed out but I've been holding some things in that have really bothered me about some things in this community um it's not what any specific channel is doing on their own time it's what other channels have done to me and if you want me to dish the dirt because it was almost so bad that I almost quit YouTube because I was it made me so depressed that I didn't even want to do it had it not been for this one email that I got from this wonderful lady like she seriously pulled me right out of it like I was so depressed about my channel so in the dark and just almost ready to shut it all down that it's like you don't get what you want when you want it but you always get what you need when you need it that kind of thing well she was exactly what I needed in that moment and she wrote me this beautiful email about and you know I won't go into the complete details of it but more or less it was about um, the connection she felt with me I was I don't know if I was the first or one of the first channels that she ever watched on YouTube one of the first people she subscribed to and uh, she sent me an email to tell me how much I meant to her and I know that sounds weird but I just it's hard to explain without you know giving it all away but I don't want to like I didn't ask this person's permission to share her email or anything, so I don't want to, like, get too into it, but, um, the things that she said literally pulled me right out of this little slump I was in, and it made me realize why I do this. I, I do it for myself because I love making videos. I love connecting with you guys. I love uh, the community for the most part. We do, you know, every community is going to have a few bad apples. And it just, I got to remember that I am here for me and I am here for you. Those of you that watch my channel, that enjoy my content, that enjoy listening to me ramble, because I can do that, I can ramble. And you still want to be around and you still want to watch. You know, I do this for what you know like I have created this little community within a community the abstract crafter community you know abstract crafter isn't just me I'm just it's us it's me and my subscribers and me and the people in my Facebook group and the people that email me and that's really what abstract crafter is and To let somebody get into my head and make me doubt my channel and doubt my content, I won't let that happen again because 
not everybody is going to be vocal in the way that this lady was, but I, I've made that connection with so many of you and you don't need to tell it to me for me to know it. I should, you know what I mean? It should just, I should just know. And so I won't let it happen again. It, the more I grow, the more that kind of stuff is going to pop up. And so I need to, well, maybe not exactly the situation that I went through. I'll never let that happen again. I tell you that right now. I won't be doing any collabs with anybody, period. Uh, maybe Donnie, but Donnie's different. And we actually are in... We did talk about doing a collab, but <clears throat> if I do it, that'll be the only one I do. I won't, I won't do anything like, no. And that's already saying too much. I just won't work with other people again. It has too much effect on me and my channel, and I almost lost a bunch of subs because of things that I didn't even do, but because I was attached to it. Oh, so much drama. If you, like I said, if you want to know the full story, let me know. If it's not something that you guys really want me to get into, that's more than okay, too. I've vented about it. I've talked about it. I've wanted to tell you guys, but I haven't because I don't want you to think that I'm some drama queen. It's just, it was a pretty big deal. That's all. So why don't we move on to something a little bit more positive? I mean, that was, you know, not super negative, but it was super vague and probably confusing because I'm confused. <laughs> so, I don't know. I'm going to keep plugging away at videos. I'm going to keep trying to make new and different content. I mean, most diamond painting channels are pretty much the same, so I try to do some things that are a little bit different. And even if it doesn't always get the most views that I'll still try to make some different things. I'm not saying I'll never do craft videos. I'm just not going to do them regularly like I had initially thought I was going to. It's okay. Um, sorry, brain fart there. Let's see what else is there. So, yeah, that's, I don't know, there's not a whole lot that I have left to say. My throat is starting to get really dry. It's really sore. We're on our third clip already as it is. So, I got two more videos that I got to film. But I want to get this one going and uploaded because I'm on a time crunch with this. I promised it at a, on a certain date and time. So I, I want to try to get that out ASAP. All right. Um, let me check over my list and make sure. Yeah, so like I said, I will try to come back. Um, I'm going to be doing Exploring the Essentials. Should be coming up next. I think the next voted one was uh, prepping a, or starting a kit. Or what I do when I start a kit and what I do when I finish a kit. So I have to film that in two clips because I have to show you how I begin something. And I'm not like this is I'm not gonna use this as my finishing a canvas because it's not the typical way, it's not with even typical drills that I use. So yeah. So that one will probably I'll do it, but it'll be most likely the one that'll be coming out next with exploring the essentials is different ways to kit your projects and different ways that I kit my projects. So there'll, that should be coming out next. I have a post review coming out next. And let's see, I think that's about it. So I will try to get in another drill with me. It'll probably be on a different canvas at that point. It'll probably actually be the one from Lotion because a lot of people said they wanted me to see me work on that one. So that'll probably be the next one that I work on in a drill with me. So, and it is really pretty, so I can't wait. The colors in that are absolutely stunning. So okay, uh, I don't think I have anything else. No. 
yeah so yeah let me know if you want to know more about that story I started if you don't care you don't want to hear the drama I also understand not everybody's into that we'll let majority rule on that one so all right guys with that I will let you go so have an awesome day have fun diamond painting have fun crafting have fun doing whatever it is that makes you oop, happy. I love you, friends, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.